fashion, style, and so much beguile. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect new fashion trend. But Christian Dior accidentally added a new silhouette to the fashion industry. Thus, the new look was born! With its poofy A-line skirts and nipped-in waist, this ultra-fluffy feminine silhouette has dedicated its existence to making the most stylish 1950s housewives. After World War II, coming out of the 1940s with its short and somewhat boxy silhouette, the masses were enthralled by Christian Dior's new look and it took off like wildfire. But how was this new hourglass silhouette achieved? With special underwear, of course. Some of 1950s women's underwear was similar to today's. They had bras and panties too. The briefs had that iconic granny panty silhouette, which with the tighter styles of the decade created panty lines galore. And the bras, oh the glorious, fantastic, out of this world missile shaped bras. The popular cone shaped bra came in all sorts of fabrics and colors. Everyone tends to look at these oddly shaped over-the-shoulder boulder holders and think, what on earth were people in the 1950s thinking? And my answer is, they weren't thinking on earth because they were thinking of rockets in the space race, so yeah, missiles. Like missile boobs, there were plenty of weird underwear in the 1950s, like girdles, petticoats, and corsets, of course. Yes, the 1950s had corsets, although a bit different from the Victorians, 1950s corsets were made of rayon and had cups. Some sort of waist cinching was required to achieve that 1950s hourglass silhouette, and if you didn't want to wear a corset, you'd wear a girdle. So the 50s had one more way than the Victorian era to make women's clothing more complicated. We still have girdles today, and they've transformed into a little something called shapewear. There were some women who weren't too happy with the new look. They liked the shorter skirts, overalls, menswear inspired, and somewhat less restricting attire of the 40s. Although they too wore girdles in the 40s, so it wasn't like women were totally unrestricted in their attire. Other women really loved the new look and wanted to fall back into the more traditional feminine roles. The war had been scary and they probably wanted to return to something more familiar that gave them a feeling of safety with all the missile boobs and poofy skirts. Hmm, yes, peak femininity. Another underlayer is one that has always been a favorite of mine, the petticoat, aka crinoline. I'd walk into antique stores when I was a kid, and whenever I saw one of these, my eyes would pop out of my head. They were just the epitome of fun in clothing form. The 1950s petticoats came in white, but also a variety of vibrant colors. Blues, reds, yellows, some were thinner, some were jam-packed with fabric to create that extra poofy new look. And to create the new look, those petticoats had to keep their extra poofy shape. And according to my grandma, she who was a teenager in the 50s, they would starch the crinolines, as she calls them, to keep them nice and poofy. Besides the corset or girdle, I'd say the crinoline slash petticoat is one of the most important items when creating the classic 50s shape. I recently bought a vintage crinoline from the antique store, and I thought I'd show you the difference it can make in the shape of the outfit. So I'm going to be wearing my 50s slash 60s dress for this look, and this is the before and after. And I also recently bought an even poofier reproduction petticoat. It just is so much fun to move around in, super pink, highly recommend. Reproductions are pretty easy to find, just look up 1950s petticoat. For this, I put on my matching pink skirt before and after. You can really see how all these extra layers and puff puffs really help the silhouette. And don't forget an apron because if you're dressed in like a 1950s housewife, you need an apron. And I cannot forget to talk about stockings. Tights with a waist, as we know today, had not been invented yet, so in order to keep one's hosiery up, one needed a garter belt or girdle or corset with attachments. And under one's dress, one would wear a slip dress to smooth out any unwanted lines. Oh yes, and men's underwear existed too! It looked like this! They didn't have any of the fun stuff. It's not as fun to talk about as ladies' undergarments, so I'm gonna leave it at that. So, now, if you ever get the chance to time travel back to the 1950s and dress as a woman would, now you know what underwear to bring along! Although, I don't know why you'd want to travel to the 1950s. It was a pretty uncomfy time if you were anything other than a straight white man. <laughs> let's, let's just all agree time travel wouldn't be very fun, but actually horrifying. Like, I love learning about Middle Ages or the French Revolution, but would never want to time travel there because, uh, well... <laughs> no, 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 no! <laughs> anyway, I'm done talking about old underwear now. You weirdos.